Ambular actomer bone. They actually wind up coming together pretty well, don't they? I was talking to Jen yesterday, Jen Schiffer. said, well, what I really want to know is polymer or parallax. Have you ever picked a framework or library or stack and got this? <laughs> this is a couple years ago. Some coworkers and I went to a place called Del Taco. I don't know if you have those outside of Utah, but we have Del Tacos. And he ordered a burger with just, it was really hard to get the order out. And he said, well, I just want like ketchup and a pickle on it. I don't like the cheese and all that kind of stuff. And so <laughs> he opens it up. And all he gets is a ketchup and a pickle. Um, went back and got the, the burger. But uh, um, sometimes when we compare all of these libraries or frameworks or toolkits or whatever name they want to give themselves, uh, we sometimes think that they're um, equivalent to each other or uh, more similar than maybe we um, realize that they are or aren't. Um, so if you boil down browser development, I think you've got these five tasks involved. And I hope that this is a pretty unbiased list of you're building something in the browser, here's what you have to consider. So you've got to interact with data stores. Maybe it's like a JSON API, maybe it's just something to local storage, or maybe it's something over WebSockets, but you've got some data store somewhere that you deal with. You want to render that data to the UI and keep it up to date. And you need to respond to user interaction to go and change things and you need to deal with routing and URLs so that we don't continue to break the web like most of us have been for the last few years. And we need to do project stuff. Where do the files go? Uh, what do we name them? Do we use underscores, dashes, camel case? What if you're on Unix and guys on Mac and now your capitalization is wrong, but it works on your computer, but not theirs? That kind of stuff. Uh, and also the build. So I framed this whole talk around these five tasks and then uh, addressed what each of the Ambular Actum or Bone libraries are concerned about. Not necessarily what they are the best at or whose API is better for the task, but just how concerned is the library with one of these tasks. So here's my graph. Uh, no surprise, Ember is very concerned about everything. Um, I took out a few columns like your clothes, uh, your opinion on MongoDB, um, <laughs> things like that. So uh, you can see Ember is very concerned about everything. Uh, Angular is concerned to some degree with uh, all of these except your project stuff. React and Polymer are just right up the middle. And then uh, Backbone has probably the strangest looking uh, graph on there. And also, for all these comparisons, uh, my favorite UI that I build is a master detail UI. You think about any application that has any significance in your life, and it's going to have some sort of master detail. So that's uh, where you've got a list on the left, and then some items on the right. Um, so let's look at uh, what we've got here. So here is um, the app that I built in all five of these libraries. So on the left, we have a list, and as we click through the list, it changes the person on the right. I get an active link here. I can refresh this and it should still work. Uh, I can come to Matt and I should be able to click back and that should all work. I edit Matt, Matthew, save it. And it should update here, update here. Um, and it's actually going off to a server side API. Um, so those, re those changes in the edit should be reflected when I refresh here as well. So, those are the, um, oh. that's the, the baseline for how I'm comparing all of these things for the code samples and the rest of it. Uh, but on master detail, um, think about your UI. You probably have this. Even if it's just like the global nav at the top of your website or 
probably you have several layers of master detail. A list here, a list on the left, go inside there, there's another list, and just one little piece of your app is changing at a time, while all the wrapper stuff on the outside is not. Um, so let's look at Backbone. So I, I ranked it zero to four in how concerned it is, not how good it is at it, but how concerned it is with the problem. So data, Backbone, I uh, gave a two. Um, rendering, nothing, user interaction, routing, and project. So here is Backbone's own definition of what it is. Backbone gives structure to web applications by providing models with key value binding and custom events. Collections with a rich API for innumerable, function, innumerable functions, views with declarative event handling, and connects it all to your existing API over RESTful JSON interface. Uh, so not a whole lot of like tagline there, but just very, here's what I give you. Uh, I sent out a questionnaire to the uh, creators of all these libraries, and this was my response from Jeremy. <laughs> Uh, I was, I was going to have a slide for each question, and, but anyway. Um, Jeremy, I, I don't want to like be talking bad about Jeremy. Jeremy had a huge influence on probably all of us, and a lot of us are still using underscore CoffeeScript. Uh, 2012 was like the year of Jeremy, right? And uh, he, he did a lot of great things for all of us. Um, so data, how does it handle data? It's got backbone model. It's probably the most interesting part of the library. Uh, it works great with a lot of REST-ish APIs right out of the box but when it doesn't, it's super easy to just back out and change some things. And you got PubSub to connect those models to your view rendering, and then you have this idea of collections. And all of this stuff gets cached, so when you um, request some records, it's gonna stay in that collection, and then when you ask for one of those items back from that collection, you get the same object that uh, the whole collection has, which makes updating things um, a little bit easier. Rendering doesn't do anything. Backbone view prototype render is a no-op. So in order to get anything on the page at all in Backbone, you've got to do something yourself. So you have brains in your head, you have feet in your shoes, you can steer yourself any direction you choose. You're on your own, and you know what you know, and you are the one who will decide where to go. Most people do this, um, at least the demos. Uh, I've seen a lot more handlebars in the wild. And then I guess you could do manual DOM. And actually a new thing, a lot of people are uh, mixing up Backbone and React and having React do the rendering for them. And then just using Backbone for the models and collections. Uh, user interaction. So it's interesting that Backbone doesn't provide anything for rendering, uh, but it does provide user interaction. Uh, so you have a declarative select handler configuration to uh, select an element and then handle the event. Routing, it's got a router, I only ranked it at a one because all it really does is maps some route to some handler and then that's it. Um, and then you have some programmatic APIs to navigate around the app, uh, but it doesn't have um, any like declarative routing or, or links that automatically get their hrefs set. Um, you have to control all of the setup and teardown during transitions. There isn't actually even a concept of a transition, so if you wanna stop or cancel or retry some sort of route, there's nothing in there, so you've got to build that yourself. Project stuff, you're on your own. Um, Backbone played a really critical role. We probably have all used it, most of us. Um, so I, I have like a, a little special place in my heart for Backbone, uh, for getting everyone to actually start taking the browser even more seriously than we had started to when jQuery and other things showed up. Uh, so let's look at the code really fast in Backbone to make that thing happen. So I've got my index with some uh, EJS templates. Hope that's big enough, I can make it bigger. Um, so I'm getting my models in here and just calling things on it. The template is probably the least interesting part here. Uh, total lines of code, I was down at about 200. So stuff that I had to write because Backbone didn't provide anything for me, I had to tell it how you actually render anything into the browser. Um, and then a little thing called serialize. So this is an interesting thing about Backbone is usually you get someone else's flavor of Backbone uh, because it doesn't, someone in the hot tub last night said that Backbone gives you enough rope to hang yourself and, that's, and then that's it. Um, so you gotta, get, you gotta get the rest in there yourself. Um, the models almost worked with my API. 
I had to um, assign this parse thing to extract root, which then will uh, pull out, you know, like the root key that some APIs give you. Um, actually had to handle the click events on links to be able to route around through the app myself. And so any link that is not external, I'm going to grab that and then tell the backbone history to move around. Um, and notice here, I, I didn't program in any way to like prevent a transition from happening. Say a user has a form half filled out and then they click some link somewhere else. In old development, you have on before and load to alert and say, hey, you're not done with this form, are you sure? But with my little implementation here, I'm on my own. Um, and then to set up the models to my APIs, pretty quick. Um, that was, that's about it. Back one model here, define a couple things. And then um, my collection, also very, very simple. Um, and then you get into the view stuff. I don't really want to talk a whole lot about this because this is just my idea of how Backbone can render a view. But um, basically I have a router that has um, couple mapped routes here, contact, and then edit. And then the app and contact are two things. And it was kind of tricky to keep the left column around, but only change the stuff in the right. Um, since Backbone isn't prescribing anything to me, I had to figure that all, all out on my own. So all in all, yeah, yeah there's the app. Not bad but a lot of work. Um, I've been doing Backbone for two years at work and I couldn't believe I've like, I'm not a very good developer still <laughs> because um, it took me way longer to do the Backbone one than any of the others. All right, so that's enough about Backbone. Oh, it's not enough about Backbone. Uh, what's really neat about Backbone is you can use it like anywhere. If you've used Testum before, their little interface inside of the console is actually using Backbone to create this tab interface inside of a CLI. I think that's really slick. Can't do that with most of the other things that I'll be talking about. Okay, Angular. Uh, this is the new kid on the block that has seemed to like take over everything, at least in my city. Um, they had the conference there in Salt Lake, and we've got, I got a lot of friends that are really big into Angular. Superhero JavaScript MVW. W stands for whatever let you extend HTML vocabulary for your app. It's a tool set for building a framework most suited to your application development. Misko says he wanted to make it easy for web designers, non-developers, to build web apps. Um, I didn't know that they had a Firebase backend idea at first, but they dropped that. Um, what development problems does it solve? Decouple your DOM, and testing is right there. It's one of their first things and then creating DSLs in HTML. What features are you excited about? Directives, so you can make your own DSL. Uh, directives are pretty neat, especially the composition with them. Uh, so then I asked him for a sales pitch. He said, Angular is the web, what the web browser would have been had it been designed for dynamic applications rather than static documents and by the Angular team. <laughs> uh, so rendering. I added the last part. The UI stays up to date with the magical scope object. So it's interesting that Misko says that uh, it was designed for designers, because uh, if you think about that scope object and you think about CSS, if you say color red, the color is red. And that's how scope works. You say scope.name is Ryan, and name is Ryan. When it, wherever I change that, it's just going to update. So uh, I think that this is one of the greatest things about Angular is you really can just um, hand it to someone who doesn't have a whole lot of experience with browser development and just say, here's this dollar scope thing, put whatever you want on it, whenever you want, and this thing is gonna stay up to date for you. So uh, it gives people a real rush of like, uh, just enthusiasm and excitement for building stuff in the browser that they haven't had probably their entire career in the web. Uh, co composing attribute directives is also pretty powerful. If you wanna make something draggable and have a tooltip, you just have two attribute directives. You just give them some attributes on your HTML element and you get that behavior. So you can compose those together really well. Um, but essentially it's just a whole bunch of uh, directives that are hooks based on the name of an element or the attribute on the element uh, that gives it some behavior. Uh, so yeah, I think their HTML DSL is really good. The scope API is, is fantastic. Um, 
the directive API is completely nuts. Um, I, I really like, I don't understand this stuff. <laughs> but anyway, people, people like building directives. Um, I think the API that you get from it is really, really good. Uh, data, I, oops, I gave it a two, not a one. Um, it gives you HTTP, which is really just an XHR module, so that the scope stuff will get up to date automatically for you. If you do anything outside of Angular's like blessed modules, you've probably got to call scope apply to get their dirty checking, which is the way that they keep the UI up to date to happen. And so HTTP will do that for you automatically. And then resource is a declarative model-like module to hook up an API to an HTTP API. Um, but it's very limited in that like it's expecting XHR calls and like puts and posts and get. Uh, you couldn't really twist it very well into other things like local storage or stuff like that. Uh, so that's why it's only a two uh, instead of like a four where maybe they would provide something to allow you to um, plug into any kind of data store. User interaction, same paradigm as rendering, just use the HTML scope. So you add functions onto scope and then you um, put an attribute on your element to like on click or ng click will then call some function. Uh, no, de no delegation, though. No, all the events live on the elements. Routing, I only gave it a two because it has ng view, um, which is pretty nice. You can just say, with these routes, render this controller and this template into this ng view. But it's limited because you can't do any sort of nesting. So in my example, I've got stuff on the left, thing on the right, and you can't, um, you can't do another level uh, with ng view. So there's UI router, a lot of you out there are thinking, yeah, just use UI router. And so you can, and UI router is pretty good. And in Angular 2.0, they're redoing the router completely. Uh, I don't know if they're still looking at Ember, but they were looking at Ember's router. As far as project stuff, you're on your own, you know what you know, and you're the one who'll decide where you go. Uh, let's go to the, um, yeah, let's go to the code for Angular real quick. So Angular, not very much. That's the whole app. Um, I didn't really have to do anything custom. They've got a route provider thing to do my uh, routing. And they've got Angular resource that I plugged into my API with just this quick little um, config. I make my controllers and just dump stuff onto scope, which is super, super easy. Um, and then my edit controller was not too bad. The only kind of weird thing was to keep the stuff on the left up to date. I had to do a pub sub, so I edit the thing, publish an event, comes back up, and then I just refetch <laughs> all the contacts from the server. There'd be a much better way to do that, I'm sure, but um, uh, Angular didn't really direct me on how to do something like that, so I had to go for it myself. All right, so next up we have Polymer. Polymer, if you're not familiar with, it is uh, basically a partially a polyfill for um, using the new stuff that's coming out in the web, so web components mostly. Um, from their website, Polymer puts elements back at the center of web development. You can create your own HTML elements and compose them into complete, complex applications that are scalable and maintainable. Uh, data, they don't do anything for data. You're on your own. Routing, they don't do anything for routing. They don't do anything for project stuff. Uh, complex applications that are scalable and maintainable with just elements, that's me. Um, anyway, uh, so rendering. Everything's an element. It actually uses the shadow DOM when available, which is super weird for your CSS, because if you like have some class names on your elements in application elements, you have to import that CSS to every single one of those uh, elements for it to apply. They two-way bind the properties, so if you pass in a property to an element, and then you change it outside of that element somewhere, it's going to stay up to date in the element, and vice versa. If you change that property inside the element, outside the element's gonna stay up to date, and it's just declarative. This is that, and you're done. Um, you have published properties, so you have more granular control of what the outside world can pass in. Um, just like normal elements, they don't respond to some types of attributes. And a really nice mustache syntax for content and attributes. 
uh, you just drop in the mustaches into anywhere in the template and they will work. Uh, user interaction uses declarative events just like uh, the other ones so far and they just map to methods on the component definition, so very similar. Uh, a good distinction is Polymer versus the platform. So the lowest layer of Polymer is platform.js and that contains all the libraries that are the polyfills. Uh, but then Polymer itself has like some stuff on top of that. So when you're doing Polymer, you're not actually like doing the future of the web, web components. You've got that, but you also are using a Polymer library built on top of it. So it's not exactly what it's going to be when web components ship. I think HTML imports is one of the most interesting parts of all of this. Uh, you think about bringing Bootstrap into your application or any sort of a uh, library that has CSS and JavaScript. With HTML imports, this is what it would be to bring Bootstrap into your app and you're done. Because that Bootstrap HTML file could have the CSS and it could have the JavaScript. Uh, all your dependencies become declarative. HTML knows how to load HTML, it knows how to load JavaScript, and it knows how to load CSS. And so um, it's actually, I, I was playing around with this and it was, it was a ton of fun to be able to just make an HTML file and import it. Um, and you don't need a build, but you could throw a build at it, of course. Uh, let's look at the Polymer code. So here's all my, uh, so you have a Polymer element, so I've got to import my stuff, um, bring in contact and edit, those are elements that I use inside of here, you define your template. Like I said here, with each one of these I had to import the style sheet, uh, which felt kind of annoying, but it worked fine. A little bit like Angular here, template repeat, this will repeat something in there. Um, my routing, I had no idea what to do for routing, so I did this total hack where I said, it's hidden if the route isn't index, and then I'll show it, and this one's hidden if it's not contact. Um, uh, Addy, Addy looked at my code last night, and he didn't make any changes with the routing, so I guess I did an okay job. I don't know. Uh, here is 100 lines of stuff that I had to write that um, it didn't provide for me. So I made a little XHR thing. I had to make my own router, which is not too bad. I just made a really quick little junky one. Uh, and then a contact store to fetch and deal with my API. So 100 lines of my own code, and then inside of each of these, you have your Polymer elements. And uh, as you can see in my app element, I set up my router, et cetera. So it's kind of fun. That one felt the strangest of all of them to build for me anyway. Uh, but I'm really excited about Polymer. Um, Ember, the whole rainbow. This is the one I'm most familiar with. Uh, I use this all the time and I'm actually pretty involved with Ember. Uh, very simple marketing. It incorporates common idioms so you can focus on what makes your app special. Uh, here's why Tom created it. You know, the browser is getting competitive and developers didn't have the tools or even sometimes the vocabulary to take advantage of that. Uh, what does it solve? Manages complexity as the size of your application and the team building it increases. Uh, so get rid of boilerplate, push you in the right direction. Uh, it provides correct answers for your questions instead of being on your own. Uh, I was most excited about the router and the router is awesome. Common misconceptions, documentation is hard. It's actually very well documented now. Getting started is hard. It's not nearly as hard as it used to be, and in some cases, it's super easy to get started. Uh, favorite website is vine.com using Ember. Um, I'm running out of time, so I'm going to cruise through the sales pitch there. So routing, this is arguably the best part of the app. Um, you can have nested routes, and those couple to nested views. And so doing a master detail and then doing a master detail inside of there is the very same you don't have to change anything, where in all the other code examples that I had to do one more level, I would have had to change all my architecture. Um, routes have a ton, of, a ton of functionality. You can pause, retry, cancel transitions, you get declarative links to other places, and from experience, it is a lot harder to break the URL than to support it in Ember. Uh, rendering, it's got bound templates, it's actually very much like Polymer. Um, Yeah, sometimes it can be a little bit slow with handlebars, but HTML bars is coming out, it's gonna make it a lot faster. User interaction, same as some of the other ones, you got the, the declarative events in your HTML that map to uh, actions on your controllers and views and routes. Um, but you also get imperative view and component events. So uh, 
if you need to drop down to that level, sometimes it's a lot more uh, convenient or just a better place to do your events imperatively rather than always having them in your templates. Also, event handlers are free in Ember. You can add a thousand of them and it's not an expense because everything's just delegated. So there's one click handler for the entire app. Uh, data, Ember Data is a separate li li library, uh, so you don't have to use it, but it's got models, serializers, and adapters so that you can custom, uh, so that you can connect any sort of API into Ember Data. Uh, be able to serialize how you need to, be able to talk to some service with an adapter how you need to. It's also got an in-memory cache, so when you ask for the same, for an object by some ID, you get that same object every single time you ask for it, uh, which makes keeping things up to date easy. Um, and it ships with two adapters that a lot of people can use out of the box. Uh, project stuff, Ember CLI, it's a thing that creates a boilerplate project for you, gives you prescribed file organization and uh, tests, build deploy tools, generators, lots of stuff. So Ember cares about uh, all the things. So let's look at the Ember code. Ember was the shortest one. That's it, that's the whole thing, 53 lines of code and if you look inside of here, everything is actually just uh, very declarative. I just say, here's my host for my REST service. Here are the attributes on my model. Um, here are my routes. I have a contact route and an edit route, and they map to these paths. Um, Ember is unique in that it tells you how to provide data to your templates. Um, so like, it, like Tom was saying in that quote, like it's giving us a vocabulary about these kinds of things. Um, same thing here, contact route, I just tell it find that contact. And in these two routes here, contact and edit route, I'm gonna get the same object in both of them. And then uh, just a quick little action here to save, model save and transition to a different route. So uh, Ember had everything that I needed to build this UI. Uh, in structure, we call developing with Ember whiplash driven development. Uh, it gives you so much and you go so fast for two weeks and you forget that like this isn't just how your life is and then bam, you hit something and uh, you get extra angry at Ember <laughs> because you were going so fast where if you were going a normal speed, you wouldn't get so angry at it. <laughs> so, uh, React, this is uh, a new, I guess it's like a year old now, right? Um, Lots of people are using React for the V and MVC. It uses a DOM diff for high performance, um, but you can also do service hand rendering because of this DOM diff. And instead of having two-way binding, it has a one-way reactive data flow. Uh, so data just flows down to your app, and the goal is there to make your app easier to reason about. Um, Pete is saying basically that uh, it was really hard to set up all those observers, so they wanted to do it automatically, and they ended up with React. Um, it lets you use plain old JavaScript to express your UI at any point in time rather than some inis initial state and then update that state as things change. Uh, most excited about the composition and that render is treated like a black box. Uh, for me personally, it has felt a lot like server-side rendering where you get a request, you get some data, you build HTML, and then you're done, and then you're out. You don't have like this, I set up this house of cards and now I pulled out this piece oh no, the whole thing fell apart, just refresh, and then it's back to normal. Um, so they're trying to get rid of that uh, key value observation state web of things with React. A couple common misconceptions. JSX is the least interesting part of React. JSX is uh, basically XML in your JavaScript rather than JavaScript in your template. You go the other way. Uh, I, I love using JSX. Uh, it's a harmless declarative language. Dump it into the imperative one. Feels great. Uh, the virtual DOM is about treating your render like a black box. It's not about performance. His favorite website that uses it is facebook.com, of course. <laughs> Wants to keep his job. Um, here's a sales pitch. Express your UI at any point in time. Data binding has problems with composition. And React is the most expressive way to build user interfaces. Uh, data doesn't give you anything. You're on your own. Routing doesn't give you anything. Project stuff, nothing. Um, Rendering is, it's just, it's such a different paradigm. I encourage you guys to go, or all of you to go try it out and play with it. It's one of those things where if you read about it, it's not quite the same as actually experiencing it. I can tell you about some really delicious salsa that my wife and I make, but until you actually taste it, you won't really know what I'm talking about. Um, our tiki masala, though, is awful. Uh, 
anyway. Um, but everything feels like input output, right? It feels like functions. You want to build some sort of SVG icon, you make a function that returns some XML and you're done. Uh, this is actually really good right here. Very good example of how to express your UI. You've got props that come in. You have these things that make elements that go out. Filter it, sort it, slice it, map it, return some divs, and you're, you're done. So it's pretty interesting. Uh, and user interaction declarative just like everything else. Um, so some of my thoughts, uh, Ember and Angular obviously give you the most, uh, and you don't have to write a whole lot of your own code. Um, so if you don't want to be writing a bunch of your own stuff, then you probably want to pick one of those. If you want to do other things and you enjoy writing your own things, those other things are great options. Thank you.